the West African state of Mali unexpectedly entered the spotlight over the winter after France sent its military forces to the country to help battle Islamist fighters, backed by international terror groups, threatening to take over a secular democratic state of 15 million people. Now they've gone. Islamic symbols are painted all over, but the country is facing an enemy of a different kind. Poverty. The recent crisis only made a bad situation worse. Over 35 percent of Malians live in extreme poverty. That's around 6 million men, women and children. We travel to just outside the capital Bamako, where we witness these scenes, a common sight in the country's economically depressed rural areas. It's very difficult to get well here. There is no running water. We have to buy it. It's expensive. I have many children. I don't have enough money to feed them properly or send them to school. People live in houses built by themselves from handmade mud bricks. Apart from running water, these homes often lack electricity. Diallo, a driver among the few employed residents of this village, says the hardest thing is to leave hand to mouth while knowing your country and its people could and should be very rich. Mali is full of diverse natural resources, with mining forming a significant part of the country's GDP. There are many mineral deposits, but we don't see this richness. The elite, maybe, they feel. Corruption is terrible and revenue distribution is lame. Aminata believes mostly foreign companies extracting the country's natural resources is as big, if not a bigger problem than corruption. International firms exploit our sites, but they're not interested in developments on the ground. They're afraid that if that happens, we'll not need them and we'll get all the benefits. Major governmental programs are aimed at attracting more foreign investors, with Parliament even adopting legislation for their needs. Mali has resources, but they're not exploited well. We need long-term development and infrastructure support so that people would feel more comfortable. But many doubt that foreign money will go to improve people's living standards. David, journalist from the North, says resources may even bring harm. He's among those who think that it's the country's uranium deposits, amounting to thousands of tons, that's really behind the recent French intervention in its former colony. I heard they found uranium, and I think they came here to protect us from terrorists, but also to protect themselves from risks of losing such a valuable resource. Apart from uranium, there are diamonds, oil, copper, iron, which are all just waiting to be extracted while millions of Malians wonder if their country's hidden treasures will ever translate into a better life for them. Mali, one of the world's poorest countries, this West African state where people survive on just a few cents per day, is now at a crossroads of global interests, businesses and threats. How tackles those after months of conflict is far from certain now. What is bitterly clear is that it will be many years before ordinary Malians like these ones can benefit from simple necessities like regular meals or electricity in their homes. Marie Finoshna, RT from Mali.